By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back because it's Tuesday. We are back at the beautiful, wonderful old school Magic the Gathering tournament in Arnhem, the Camel Trophy. And we have reached the semi-finals. And for the semi-finals, we are going to look at let me have a look here we are going to look at a wbr so a white black and red troll disco deck taking on the deck that we saw performing in the quarterfinals as well the urnum gannon deck so that is white blue and green so there's a blue power splash now before we are going to the actual semi-final i just want to do a quick um deck tech by looking at both of the, these decks looking at their key cards and discussing them with you and talking about where i think the chances are for both of these decks now if you want to skip straight to game one no worries check the description below and click that timestamp okay we are going to go to the deck tech the player on the left is playing with a troll disco deck and this is not your usual troll disco deck because it has white in it it's a white black and red troll disco deck and this is going to be quite interesting and this is a trend that we're seeing now is people are taking uh known decks you know mainly tier one or tier two decks and they're trying to see what colors what elements can i add to this deck to make it even better what are the weaknesses and what can i do and in this case this player has chosen to add white to the mix and white gives you a lot of control it gives you swords it gives you disenchant it gives you balance it also gives you strong creatures in the form of sarah angel so white has a lot to offer now interesting here is that we'll see that full control white package right next to already a Nevenerals disc and right next to the possible direct damage of a red deck so it's going to be really interesting to see how this will will pan out I think we'll see a lot of destruction and a lot of answers coming from this deck because it's chock full of answers. So curious, curious to see how that's gonna go and if this player is able to control the Urnum Ganon deck. Talking about the Urnum Ganon deck, let's take a look at that brew. The Urnum Ganon deck is just like the Troll Disco deck, um, a, a, a deck that we know, but a deck that has also been adjusted by the player. So usually Urnum Ganon is based on the four cards we see here, or well, based on but it's it's based on ramp you want to ramp with birds of paradise or line where else you can also use felber stones this player is playing with felber stones then you play out a big creature like an urnum Jin, uh, like a sarah angel uh, in the case of this player it can also be a surrender befreed because he's playing i believe with a full play set of surrender befreeds as well you know so he has a pretty strong blue component and after that you kind of want to close the game by playing an armageddon then your opponent cannot play out any of his or her threats and you have your big fatties on the board already and you just start bashing that is in a nutshell the idea of armageddon now this armageddon deck is much more diverse because there is blue in here and blue gives it access not only to blue power but also to those surrender prefreaks three four flying powerhouses and in general this urnum Gannon deck compared to maybe other urnum Gannon decks that you're used to is actually full of beef there are a lot of creatures in here and i think that can be uh, a plus in this case, for the Urnum Ganon player, playing out more creatures than your opponent, really going over the top. But it can also be a weakness. And it, it can be a weakness because if you commit too much to the board, um, you're very vulnerable to board sweepers. And of course, this deck plays with the, his opponent, I mean, plays with discs, also plays with balance, also plays with swords. So he has a lot of removal to his disposal. So it's really up to the Urnum Ganon player here to time, actually to both players, to really time and know when to disenchant, when to swords, when to play out an extra threat, when to wait. Also for the Urnum Ganon player, he is playing a black mage, so there will be a mind twist as well. So if you start keeping too many cards in hand, you're going to be really vulnerable for that mind twist. I don't believe the Urnum Ganon player is playing with counter spells. So that means there's nothing you can do against the mind twist. Right, so you have to choose, am I going to commit to the board with the chance of having a balance or a disc wiping everything off the board? Or am I going to keep cards in hand with that risk of running into that mind twist? And remember, basically he's playing with two mind twists because he also has a demonic tutor. So if, if there's a possibility, he will go for that mind twist, bam, your hand is gone. So that's gonna be really important here for the Earnham Gannon player. Another thing that I'm looking forward to, and maybe we're gonna see it, is we now have a player that plays with a Nevenerals disc meaning he can blow up everything. And we have a player that plays with an Armageddon because the disc does everything except lands. Armageddon takes all the lands. So we could maybe 
get what I like to call EC saturation, because in the Eternal Central you see that more often, where there's nothing on the board. How cool would that be? Without further ado, let's go to the semifinals. Game number one of the semifinals of the Camel Trophy. And we've got the Ernum Gannon player with the blue splash sitting. Well, I shouldn't call it splash with blue. It's a full, full color, a lot of blue cards in that deck sitting on the right. And on the left, we have the Troll Disco player who's added white to his Troll Disco deck. And look at that. He's going to reshuffle. And again, also for the Troll Disco player, I cannot really say it's a white splash. There's a lot of white in there. And this is never a nice start, you know, when you have to mull. Uh, we want to see an honest seven, seven against seven. But I'm sure when you're in the semifinals, you don't, you, you're thinking, yes, this is a good starting point for me. Splitting the deck here, making sure everything goes nice and fair. And let's take a look. He has to put one card under playing according to the London Mulligan rules. There is a good start here from the Ernim Gedden player. It's a Van Alliance on the board here. His name is Gideon, by the way, the player on the right. And he's playing a Soul Ring into a Sylvan Library. Remember, we're playing Swedish with Ravenna reprints. That means there's no Mana Burn. Quick Disenchant by the Troll player. I think that's very important to Disenchant. And there's a Factory here. Another attack from the Lions. Going to 18 now. There is another Mishra's Factory. Tapping three, will we see a Satch Troll? Actually a Mind Twist of two, taking care of the last two cards in hand. Or actually no, taking care of two cards in hand there, that went really quickly. There is a Disc Passing Turn, attacking again with the Lions, 14 now. Untapping the Disc. There's another Plateau with that old art, really nice. Attacking with both of the factories, going on the offense now. That means that the Earn Again player is going to 16. See another attack, he's going to 12. And there's a strip mine, so that can at least solve one of the problems. I'm actually thinking about why not stripping a factory straight away, because, well, you could do it now as well, I guess. Um, attacking here, so he goes to 14. Untapping, and there's a Brain Geyser, and they could be quite decisive in the matchup. We do see a balance there in the hands, if we look closely in the hands of the Setch Troll player. But this, of course, is a very powerful move by the Ernim Geddon player. And he's actually using the... This kind of surprises me that he uses the disc. Because maybe it's better to wait and now play a balance. Then again, it is difficult. I mean, he can dump that Mox. That's not being counted in. He has a full hand. Play a land. And just get him to discard. And yeah, he is doing it. And he's actually keeping one of the mana floating because he has to put two lands away. So this is basically a mind twist balance. And after that, he can still swing in with the factory. So using the floating mana to play that factory. I cannot see what card he has in his hand. Okay, it's a Swords. Taking care of that Urnum Jin on the battlefield. Ooh, a Time Walk. And we kind of see the blue power trying to do something back, but the Time Walk cannot really do anything for the Urnum Gen player at the moment. Factory is now gone. We're kind of top decking mode. And there's a Setch Troll hitting the board. Passing turn again. Attacking with the Setch. Dealing three damage. Going to 11. There's the Urnum Jin 4 5 powerhouse giving Forest Walk, of course. Oh no, not yet. Now it's just an attack. And now, when the Urnum Gen player's pass turn, he will have to give Forest Walk to the Setch Troll. Playing another land here. He's going to look in his graveyard. Obviously, going to look probably how many Disenchants and Swords there have been played out. There is an Armageddon. This could be decisive. Can the Setro player now get rid of that urn and maybe play a Swords? I do see a Lightning Bolt in hand there. Of course, has that Mox that will stay, Mox Ruby. Tapping two, playing double. Ooh, he's on two life. Ay, 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 ay. And is he going to take this one attack? 
Oh, swords. Oh, that is painful. He's almost there. He's on two life. I think, oh man, he needs, he needs one more lightning bolt. Oh, 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 so close yet so far. He's on two now, passing turn. I think this is it. Does he have a swords there? He does have a swords. That means he's going to six. There is a library. Oh man, this game is so swingy. There is a Sarah in his hand. I we see that blue power. I talked about that blue power in my introduction where I say, will the blue power kind of be decisive here? And there is a Setral. I, I kind of expected an activation upon end step. Maybe, yeah, that's what he's going to do right now. This flip has to hit here, and it does. And let's see, he can now play out that Sarah with that Black Lotus. This is a really nice game. It is so exciting because now the Surrender Befried is starting to work against the Urnum Gen player. He's on three life. It looks like he has a recall or a regrowth in hand going through his library. Swords is an option, but maybe he would much rather get back something more substantial. Then again, you know, Swords does the job. He's on three. But of course, he can also get back his Chaos Orb and flip. I mean, it's a risk if you miss the flip. You know, that's over, but it would be the most old school play to do. Then again, you don't have the mana. No, that's not a good idea. He doesn't have the mana, of course, to end, play it out. So this is probably going to be a re yeah, regrowth on Swords because you want to be able to play out the spell straight away. Swords, attacking, that means he's going to three. And that's it, that's game. Oh, 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 oh this, was, this was so close. Uh, it was so swingy. It was hard for me to keep track. So much happening. Uh, let's give this players a moment to go through their um, their sideboards and we'll catch up with them in game number two. Game number two. And if game number two is only half as good as game number one, then I'm really looking forward to it. Man, what a swingy game that was. They both could have won. They both could have won. And I mean, I think this game deserves a... This matchup deserves a third game, but we'll see. We'll see what the Troll Disco player can do. Look at that start. Sink your vampire in this build-up. Wow, there's a lot of beef actually in the Troll Disco deck as well. But look at this opening. Wow, it's Mock Central here for Gideon. Starting with a Surrender Befreed. I'm expecting an attack exactly. Four nice damage is put in here, but Gideon can now go for five if he wants to risk his factory. And he does want to do it, and there is that Swords. And there's his go. 17 now for the Troll Disco player, and... 13 for 12, correct me, uh, correct it here for the um, the Urnum Geddon player. There is a disenchant on the Mox, and it looks like there are some problems here with mana for both of these players. Very interesting. There is a time walk, and that can maybe help. He's already on six, needs to find something. Find a mana in the form of a Mox Pearl attacking here, going to eight. Gun attacks going to two. These games are going super fast. Fireball of one. Then he takes the surrender for free damage. And that's it. Wow. I guess these two players have to catch the bus or something. Because you guys are playing super fast. But the good news is we do get to see game number three. Let's go to the third and final game of this matchup. Game number three. One one semifinals. Who's ever going to win this one is going to advance to the finals of the Camel Trophy. The old school tournament in RM. And we see a Black Lotus, Mox Pearl, and a Factory tapping everything here. Oh, I wanted to say, well, we see a Sarah Angel. No, a Brain Geyser drawing some new cards. Pretty nice opening here. And we see a Dual Land from the Troll Disco player. Attack here, quick Lightning Bolt. And there is also a Chaos Orb. You know that when you're attacking with the Factory, you're taking a risk of getting a Bolt, getting a Swords. And when he has two land, a Disenchant could be in there as well. Looking at his hand now, played that Savannah. Or sorry, it's of course a Scrubland. Played that Scrubland. And I do see a Demonic Tutor in his hand. Probably thinking about tutoring yes or no. Also has a Disenchant. Probably wants to Disenchant upon activation. Wanting to keep that mana up. 
and can ooh it looks like yeah and now he is playing his demonic tutor and once it looks like Gideon is kind of reading that play deciding not to use his chaos orb on his mana base and that's of course a decision you don't want to play into the disenchant and it's going to be curious to see what the troll disco player will look up with his demonic tutor I really think this is kind of like a 50-50 situation here. And did he look up a disc? Ooh, there's an Armageddon. Oh, and I think this is really bad news for the Troll Disco player. I mean, he is playing a Batlance. Finding another land off the top. And there's a first creature played here by Gideon. And those Surrender Pafrits are doing a great job. And there is a Disenchant, probably upon activation on the Chaos Orb. Of course, it's hard to see here from the footage. There's a Disenchant over the Mox Pearl. So it's clear that Gideon is trying to attack the mana base of the Troll Disco player. Makes absolute sense. Swinging in here for 3, going to 17. And what can the Troll Disco player do? And we see another attack going to 14, Birds of Paradise. Mana is not an issue. Cards are more of, or, or less an issue for him. There we see a Swords. That means three more life here for Gideon, but the threat now is gone. We're a little bit in the standstill here. And there is a Sarah Angel. And again, an answer. There is an Urnum Jin and there is the Nevenerals disc and like I said in the introduction we were discussing the deck decks the Satch Troll deck has extreme has a lot of answers like it has the discs it has that whole white control package let's see what Gideon is going to do I cannot imagine that he's going to play out too much oh there's another Armageddon and of course with all those mocks and oh and this is nice oh <laughs> oh and this is this is the whole table wipe situation that I talked about in the introduction. I mean, they're playing so fast. I mean, they're already lands on the table, but I really looked forward to that moment in the game. There's a time walk now. Four lands for Gideon, only one land for the Troll Disco player. And this colorless mana in the form of a Mishra's Factory, that's not what you want to see right now. He has to pass turn. Does have a full grip of cards, but that Savannah Alliance can start doing some serious damage if the Troll Disco player cannot find any firepower he needs lands he needs red mana i guess we see that troll and we see a fireball i think what can he do and there is a black lotus is he going to use it that's the question because now he passes turn so when there is a disenchant no disenchant there is an urnum jindo and two more damage he's on eight if he can find a disc and survive one more turn. I guess he can kind of sweep the board again. He has found a soul ring, so he has some access to mana. And of course, the difficult thing with getting rid of an Urnum Jin is that it's got five defense. So for example, if it would play like a 4-4 creature, it couldn't trade with the Urnum. Oh, we see a double bolt. Actually, if there's no Fireball in his hand, because he could have played then maybe the Fireball for one, but I guess it's hard to see the hand from here. I'm sure he doesn't have that Fireball. Instead, choosing to opt for the Factory, getting rid, getting dealt with with the Swords of Plowsiers, and there's a Demonic Tutor. I think this is going to be really, really tricky for the, um, for the Troll Disco player. What he needs is a Badlands, because he has a Setch Troll in hand, and then he can play a Setch Troll. That would give him an immediate 3-3 with regeneration. That would be really nice. But for now, it's the Urnum Ganon player is kind of dictating this third game. And he's passing turn. He has so much land already. Can you imagine after two Armageddons having so much land, swinging in against, going on seven, Sarah Angel. And I think this is it. Needs to find an answer now. No, 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 no. Ay, 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 ay. That is unfortunate. Wow, but this was a really close match. Thank you both for this game. I've really enjoyed it. Um, especially that moment when there was nothing left on the board. Let's actually, let's, let's, let's look at that again 
in replay let's let's enjoy that i'm going to look it up and i'm going to paste it after this i want to i want i want to see this one more time let's have a look going to do i cannot imagine it's going to play out too much oh there's another armageddon and of course with all those mocks in oh and this is nice <laughs> oh and this is this is the whole table wipe situation that Oh, and that was one of the many, many highlights of this game. What a beautiful game it was. What a great semifinals. And this, this, I mean, this matchup could have gone either way. So congratulations to the Earn and Get in player, but definitely the Troll Disco deck. I am liking what I'm seeing. Very creative. White Splash. And seeing Sing Your Vampire is in there. And I believe I even saw Shivan in there somewhere. So, I mean, this is like very flavorful. I'm really liking it. Very, very, very cool. A thumbs up here from Timmy Talks from the channel. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by giving me a thumbs up, uh, leaving a like, leaving a comment, uh, subscribing if you're not a subscriber yet. I believe still like 50% of the viewers is not a subscriber, so you really help me out with that a lot. Um, what else can you do? Oh yeah, of course, we have patrons. Timmy Talks has a Patreon page. There's probably an info card popping up right now. And what you can do is you can go to my page, have a look, see if you want to join or not. Obviously, it's up to you, but then you can support the channel financially as well. And let's take a look at all the patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazink.